Let's bring in the Shadow Treasurer, Angus Taylor, now joins me live from Sydney. What's your overall assessment of the RBA review, Mr Taylor? Well, Karen, we, uh, we welcome the release of the review. Um, we, we see a lot in this to like, in particular, focus on keeping the Reserve Bank focused on the things that really matter, in, particularly inflation. I and mean, there's nothing that's more important around the kitchen table or the board table, for that matter, right now than the rising costs that both households and businesses are having to face. And we need a Reserve Bank that's independent, credible, capable uh, and is absolutely focused on that objective of bringing inflation inside the target range. We welcome the fact that the target range of 2 to 3% has been retained. I don't think now's the time to change that. Uh, and we welcome the fact that there's a very strong focus here on a capable Reserve Bank that's transparent and accountable. There have been errors in the recent past, and we need to make sure that everything is done that possibly can be done uh, to prevent those errors in the future. You've had a number of briefings from the review panel and were given the report early as well, straight after the Cabinet was briefed on it. What's the argument for having a separate committee just on monetary policy? Well, there's two very different roles of governance in the Reserve Bank right now. One is traditional board governance, making sure the organisation is working the way it should, and the second is focusing on monetary policy decisions, those interest rate decisions that affect every Australian. And I think there's a very compelling case to keep those two roles different. different. They're very different skill sets, very different sets of experience that you're looking for uh, in those two different roles. And, of course, that's why many countries across the world have separated the two out, including the United States, the UK and elsewhere. Uh, and so I do think it's a, there's a strong case for separation. What's crucial is that the right people are appointed to those roles and that there's a process that, that appoints the right people to those roles that's mm. not political, uh, that gets the, the absolute right people into those absolutely crucial roles because they have such a big effect on Australians, yeah. whether it's households or businesses. They're talking about a, a diversity of, of skills, obviously all in relation mm. to the economy. The, the government and the Treasurer are talking about the need for those uh, aware of how the labour market intersects with macroeconomic conditions. What would you like to see uh, with those nine members of the, the Monetary Policy Committee? What What's crucial in your mind as to the capacity of the, the individuals who are chosen? Well, you've got the deep and diverse experience and knowledge across the various areas of the economy where they can make the really difficult judgments that they have to make about what should happen to interest rates. That's what, that's what we need. That's a really tough set of decisions. They have to be capable of getting out and giving speeches on this, justifying the decisions that have been made, laying out their perspectives on it and giving all Australians much more transparency and clarity about where the Reserve Bank is going and why. Um, you know, we are all making decisions that are affected by this. Uh, when we buy a house, when we invest in a mm. business, all of these decisions, when we borrow money, all of these decisions are affected by the Reserve Bank, Kieran, and, and, and this is why we need that clarity, we need that accountability, we need that transparency, and I think that the, the review panel is is moving us in the right direction. None of this should take away from the fundamental point that government policy is central to bringing down inflation. And I think it's easy to forget that. But I tell you what, it's not just about the Reserve Bank and that's why the upcoming budget and what the Treasurer does and the government does in this upcoming budget is so crucial. What we don't need is a big spending, big taxing traditional labour budget. Yes, so if we move from bipartisanship to the budget, I don't think there's going to be as much uh, of uh, you being on the same page as Treasurer Chalmers. Uh, are you worried that there is going to be a, an explosion of spending? We know commodity prices are up. Get it, the coffers are going to be full from a, a much better performance on that front than had been forecast. Uh, the Treasurer says he's going to be responsible. I asked him today, will it be cautious or ambitious, this budget, his answer, responsible. So, therefore, would have to be putting downward pressure on inflation. Well, you take that as a cast-iron guarantee, do you, Kieran? Uh, they're, 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 they're great words. Let's see what actually happens. Because in the last budget, he said it was, he was being responsible and he spent an extra $115 billion. $115 billion 
over the forwards. That's four years. So uh, if that's responsible, I'd hate to see irresponsible. I think what he means is he's going to ignore the extreme calls from the extreme left. Uh, uh, but that's not necessarily responsible. What we need is a, a recommitment to budget balance. That went from the last budget. It's just gone. That's been in the fiscal strategy since the Charter of Budget Honesty went into place in the 1990s under Peter Costello. It's gone. No commitment to budget balance. If you want to get inflation down, you have to have a government that is making ends meet because if they don't make ends meet, households and businesses are going to have to do it for them. We all pay the price for a government that can't manage its spending. How important is it for the coalition, for, for your team, to get the focus back onto these issues as opposed to be driven by the government's agenda, largely around the voice to parliament? Well, it's important because these are the issues that Australians are facing every day. I mean, when I get out into my electorate, they're not talking about all these other issues. They're talking about the cost of living. Overwhelmingly, they're talking about the pressures that they're facing with their mortgage payments. $750,000 mortgage, they're paying an extra $20,000 a year. They're seeing their energy bills going up. They were promised a $275 price reduction. I tell you, they're not seeing that, Kieran. They're seeing the exact opposite and more. Um, they're seeing enormous pressures on their overall budgets from everything they buy every day. Um, and that's not just households, that's, of course, businesses as well. So we need the focus back on these things. Um, the Prime Minister doesn't seem to want to engage on these issues. He seems to be focused on all sorts of other things. In fact, he'd rather talk about anything except the cost of living in the economy. The truth is we need him focused, we need the government focused, and, and we're going to keep focusing on that ourselves because we see cost of living and inflationary pressures as the number one issue for Australians. And the budget reply for the opposition leader seems to me as a very important moment in the next couple of weeks that he needs to start setting his, his own agenda to say what he's about as opposed to what he's against. Well, I think that's right, but he has been saying that. He's given a speech just in the last week or so, which I think is excellent, where he emphasised aspiration, the importance of, of helping Australians to realise their aspiration, making sure we have lower taxes, making sure that the, 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 the government is managing its budget to support those aspirations of Australians, not driving up inflation, not driving up interest rates. I mean, these, these are the areas that I know Peter Dutton is focused on. You'll hear more about those uh, in the uh, budget and reply, I'm sure, and beyond, because they, they are the areas of focus that are going to give Australians the opportunity we think they all deserve. Angus Taylor, thanks for your time. Good on you. Thanks, Kieran.